Let's give God a hand clap of praise tonight. We come to lift up the name of Jesus for all that he has done for us. How many really love the Lord this night? We come to love upon him to this night to let him know God. In spite of what we've gone through today, we still have a yet praise upon our lips. Glory to God. And I just want to say, I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship. sing with me
Amen. Let's look to the Lord. Father, we thank you today and we give you glory. We honor you, Father, for letting us come together again as a corporate body. And as we come, we come in that name that is above every name. That's the name Jesus. And as we open up, Father, we thank you for your great grace and your great mercy and your tender loving kindness. And we thank you for what you did on Calvary's cross. And we're so grateful. We want to be reminded of what you've done. I shed your blood and took our sins and diseases and pains to that cross. And we thank you. We was buried with you in baptism. We rose with you in the resurrection. And now God, you've given us insight as the head of the church to walk by faith, not by sight. And so God, we declare that you are a great God and you are a magnificent God. And you're the only wise judge of all the earth. And we thank you for doing what's right in the lives of your children. And so God, we honor you today and we honor you tonight for being a great God in our lives and holding us in the hollow of your hand and chastising us the way you can only chastise us, Father. We thank you, and we do bless you and give you glory. Now, we thank you for sending back Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we know that you're not going to speak of yourself. You're going to speak of what uh, Jesus is sending to you. So as he sent the word to you, we thank you for letting it become alive to us. We thank you for revealing yourself as the third person of the Godhead and speaking to our spirits that we can live and not die and declare the works of God. And we thank you, God, for the paraclete, the comforter that walks with us. We thank you now and we bless you. Now have your way, Father. We decrease that you may increase. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. We know that you are a person. We know, God, we thank you for walking through these pews and making yourself known and open the eyes of our understanding that we may know what is the hope of our calling. We thank you now that you've called us to be men and women of faith, and we bless you. Now have your way. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Come on, get your Bibles, and um, we're over there in Luke 10. 21 and this is when Jesus started rejoicing he was rejoicing of what happened with um, his disciples as he sent them out and he was so excited when they came back and he you know he the Bible said that 21st verse in that and, and in that hour yes Jesus rejoiced in spirit yes and said I yes. thank thee O father Lord of heaven and earth yes that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent yes and has revealed them unto babes. So the word we're dealing with is revealed because we're talking about inward revelation and we're talking about audible voice and all that is done on the inside. And we know God can speak on the outside. We can hear a voice and not see a person, but we're talking about how he's speaking to us on the inside. Saints, he is talking to his children. If we would pay attention, we can hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Amen. Amen. And we can be governed by Holy Spirit and walk by faith and not by sight. So I'm trying to make sure I bring this out. And, you know, and like I said, we talked about visions and dreams and, and it's a whole lot more on what I'm speaking on. And when you go do your study, you're going to see God is always talking. Amen. And the, and the thing, we have to be listening while he's talking. He's going to reveal stuff to us and he's going to line it up with his word. And then we're going to see that we have to be obedient to what he just said. Amen. And once we're obedient, then it has to come alive to us. And once it come alive to us, then he make things happen for us. So, you know, we have to make sure the word is alive and on the inside and working. It has to be turning like a sword. Amen. And so how that's going to happen is we have to meditate on the word of God. The meditation, make the words turn and make it turn. Then it brings on success and God start revealing things. He starts showing us stuff and he began to let us see that I'm with you wherever you go. And he start building us little by little and he start showing us things that we don't even ask for. And then it shows us dreams and visions and he show us and we be writing those visions and dreams and it's so tangible we can touch it but we wake up it's reality. Reality slap us back in the face that I thought I had some but I was in the spirit on it. Amen. So when you're in the spirit on something, you have to make sure that um, that what he shows you, you'll be obedient to and then make it come alive to you. Amen. Quit telling everybody what you saw. Make that come alive to you. Amen. And when it come alive to you, the devil won't be able to steal it. Amen. Amen. 
It's one thing to see something and you don't bring it down to and bring it out of the spirit world into the natural so it can come alive. And that will keep you for days to come. Amen. Amen. And so we're talking about God revealing. So what he did, God revealed. And Jesus said, I re you reveal these things in the baby. You revealed the power unto them. You revealed them how we operate. And so, and then he told him, don't, Even don't. Even so, Father. And hold, hold up one second. He said, don't, don't, don't rejoice because you got power with the devil. And uh, <laughs> really rejoice that your name is written. So if you know your name is written, you should be rejoicing. Amen. So then Jesus started getting excited about what he uh, was telling them. And then read out the watch. Even so, Father. Even so, Father. For so it seemed good in thy sight. And yes. All things are delivered to me yes. of my Father. So everything is delivered to Jesus from the Father. Read. And no man knoweth who the Son is but yes, the Father. but the Father. And who the Father is but the Son. And who the Father is but the Son. And he to whom the Son and will reveal him. whoever the Son reveals, whoever the Son, he will uncover, he will make so we, the, the thing that he's trying to show us, it is coming alive to us. Amen. Amen. And uh, he wants to reveal the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's all about the one that we that died on that cross for us. So we're going to leave from there, and we're going to go over here to, um, let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians, second chapter, and we'll, we'll get into that verse in Scripture. And, and uh, because we're talking about God revealing himself on the inside of us, amen? Everybody say on the inside. <laughs> now, y'all, we look for stuff on the outside, but all of our blessings are working on the inside of us. Amen. Amen. And once you pay attention to what's happening on the inside of you, then you can see God uh, moving. You can see yourself walking in God's blessings. For He has to get out of us doubt and unbelief. So if you ask for wisdom, he got to bring some to you so you can use your wisdom. Amen. Amen. So if you're asking for strength, he got to bring something in your life to give you strength. So you got to go through something to get strength from. So when you pray certain prayers and then stuff start happening, you ask for that. Amen. God, give me strength. So somebody might start talking about you while you ask for strength. So you have to have strength to walk through while they're lying on you. Amen. Amen. And, but you ask for strength now. You ask for wisdom. So if nothing come to give you wisdom, then, you know, that's how Solomon, those two women came with that, that, with that child. And it's like one, one baby died. The other one lived. And the other woman took the other woman's baby. And, and Solomon used wisdom. He said, give me a knife. Let me cut him in half. And he knew from that that, my God, the real mother was going to say, don't kill my child. The other one would say, kill him. Amen. Wisdom has to come from something. You got to make sure when you're going through something, you got to apply that wisdom. Wisdom is coming from God. It's coming from heaven. And, and then wisdom, as James said in that third chapter, he said, wisdom is first pure. And if God don't bring uh, faulted wisdom. It don't bring tainted wisdom. It's pure. Amen. It's easy to be entreated. It ain't going to have partial, partiality on it. It's going to be able to bless everybody when it comes. Amen. 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 And so Jesus is the wisdom of God personified. And he's blessing everybody that want to accept God and accept the Father. And then he gave us, he gave us right, right back into our Heavenly Father. The veil of the temple was written from top to bottom. He gave us access to go in, and now we can reason ourselves. He gave us that access to get in there in the holes of holes and talk to God ourselves. Amen? Amen. So we, we are without an excuse. We can talk to God uh, anytime we feel like it. In your car, on your job, you can, you know, get in your private time, you know, on your lunch break and whisper fruit, fruit prayers to him and thank him. Uh, or you can go in a praise fest and thank him, you know, sometimes it's just good to praise God. Amen. 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 And so I say sometimes. When you're on your job, sometimes it's good to praise God. Amen. Because you can't do it all the time. But in your, in your lifestyle, you can do it all the time. So you have to make sure you keep praise on your lip. It is a weapon that God gave us to make sure that we don't get into depression and get into stuff. Amen. Amen. And so 1 Corinthians 2 and about the uh, third verse. And, and I want you to see this and, uh, uh, and look at it real good. Because here Paul is talking to the church at Corinth. And a lot of stuff going on in this church. Amen. Man, and it makes you think about the church today. I'm like, boy, it's nothing new under the sun. It's whosoever will, let him come. And are you going to be able to uh, plow through what you see in the house of God? And, I, I, you know, we don't fool people talking about everything. Is hon it ain't honky dory. I'm telling you, you got to fight. Amen. This ain't, no, this ain't no peaches and cream. When you come to the house of God, first of all, God's going to shed you of all that stuff, and it's going to be a minute before you can get it all. Because, you, you, and you know, when people are going through, they're hurting, and they don't, you know. Oh, and like, this is some pain here. 
You know, he have to take you off the potter's wheel, redo you, then put you back on the potter's wheel, keep his hand on you, making sure that you understand that I am in control. You, you, I am the potter. You are the clay. I am developing what I want in you. I want to make sure your heart is right before you start talking to people. I want to make sure you can stand under pressure. I want to make sure I can put you in this oven. And you can stand under fire. And when you come out of the fire, I can make who I want out of you. Amen. Amen. And you will be a beautiful display when God finish uh, doing what he need to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he does the job. It comes from him. And we can't make people God don't. Somebody can make us who we are. And that's why I tell people to be, 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 comf- be comfortable in your own skin. Don't, don't be acting like nobody. The Holy Ghost will come up on you like that when you're comfortable in your own skin. And when you know who you are. And when you have a balance to believe that God is doing it through you. Amen. Amen. So here we go. Let's read the word of God here and watch what and it says. And I was with you in weakness. Yes. And in fear. Yes. And in much trembling. Yes. And my speech and, and my said, preaching. I was with you when weakness was there. I was with you when I was trembling. This is Paul. This is the apostle that wrote a third of these chapters here in these, these epistles. And watch what it says. And he my was, speech. And my, he said, I was in all this, but my speech. And my preaching. And my preaching. Was not with enticing words. I didn't try to entice nobody while I was preaching. Of man's wisdom. And I didn't try to use man's wisdom while I was preaching. But in demonstration but of spirit. But in demonstration of spirit. And of power. And of power. That, that your, your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. We are preaching to people. We want you to know that we don't want your faith to stand in the wisdom of men. You can use that wisdom in your, in your natural setting when you're doing stuff. But when it comes to the word of God, the wisdom will become null and void because God wants you to use the God kind of wisdom. Amen. And he wants that wisdom to come out of your inner man so he can teach you how to go in and come out. And then he wants that wisdom to come alive to you. Y'all say amen to that. Amen. And I want you to know God don't need my help to do what he's doing. I just need to obey when he speaks to my spirit. And once I'm obedient and I walk toward obedience, then I respond to the divine. And then as I respond, worship comes that I can respond. I can respond to him. As I worship him on what he just said to me, then it brings more to what God wants me to do in life. Amen. Amen. Because worship is very important when God speaks to you. You worship when you respond to what God is saying. And as you respond to it, then you get into a, a holy awe and a worship and saying, God, I thank you for revealing this to me. Now, God, let me be obedient to what you are saying to me. Everybody say obedience is better than sacrifice. God is not speaking to us to show off. He is speaking to us, my God, that we can get a revelation and get people delivered and set free. Amen. 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 And so watch what it says here. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. Yes. But in the power but of God. But in the power of God. How be it we speak wisdom among but, them that are perfect. So we are speaking wisdom among them that are perfect. Yet not the wisdom of this world. But not the wisdom of this world. Nor of the princes of this world. Nor of the prince of this world. That come to naught. That comes to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God. So stop right there. I want you to see in uh, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12 chapter, it talks about the revelation gifts. And one of the gifts are the gift of wisdom. Wisdom is one of the revelation gifts. Knowledge is another revelation gift. And discern the spirits. Those three gifts has to work together. And it comes from here out of your belly. And so when God is giving you a word of wisdom, it's pertaining to your future. So you got to be able to know how to walk in this thing. Discern what's happening. You got to know what's coming down. So you can my God, know how to bring it out of your system. And then he'll give you a word of knowledge that pertains to your past and your presence. And God wants you to walk in this and it's coming from from the inside and he's speaking to us and showing us how to go in and come out. Amen. And then when we was talking about perception and how to walk in my God perceive stuff, it comes with my God the, the, uh, inward, the inward revelation and then you have discern of spirits operating so you can discern what spirit is around you or what spirit that you are working out of. Amen. Some folks don't know what spirit they're working out of. Y'all say amen to that. Amen. Hallelujah. You got to know that the Holy Spirit is pure and it's not going to cause confusion. Amen. You're working out the other spirit, it's going to cause all kind of confusion. It's going to cause confusion when you're working out that spirit. You bring people to envy and strife and all kind of stuff when you're working out another spirit. Trying to prove your point. Trying to show everybody how 
how good you are and what you can do. You're not doing the work. God is doing the work through us. Amen. And I'm going to say again, if God needed your help, watch this. I'm about to throw something at y'all. If God needed Adam help, he'd have made Adam first on the first day. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Amen. He waited until the sixth day to make man. And then when Adam come alive and he breathed the breath of life in him, he made everything else for him because he didn't need Adam help to do what he was doing. Amen. And as Adam stood up and, and God breathed the breath of life in his nostrils, he stood up, my God, and my God, and I don't know how long him, him and God was talking, but on the next day, God told Adam, we resting now. I done did all the work. I don't need you to help me do nothing. I'm resting right now. I did all the work already. And I want you to know God wants us to rest in Jesus. The work has already been done. You don't have to do nothing but be obedient. You don't, and when we are obedient to the things of God, we rest in him. We let him do the work. We move when the cloud moves. We stop when he stops. We stand still when he's still. We don't do anything until he say what it, we need to do. Amen. Y'all ain't, ain't catch this one right here. Y'all didn't get that on the sixth day he made man. I'm going to say it again. The seventh day he rested. He wanted Adam to know, I don't need your help. <laughs> Amen. I already did all the work. I'm resting now. And y'all know Jesus came and said, take my yoke upon me and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. In other words, I want you to rest in me. My yoke is easy and my burdens are light. I want you to rest in what I'm doing. And you know, watch this. Let me give you another. You know, when, when they're training a baby uh, ox or a cow to, to plow. Now, 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 listen to this good. When they're training them to plow, they put the baby, they put the same yoke on the baby, and they, they put it, the other part on the mother, and they, the mother starts plowing, but the yoke on the baby is light. So the mother is struggling to do the, everything else. Because Jesus did everything else. He didn't plow the way. And we ought to have an easy yoke on us. And we should have a light burden. Because he already took the heavy burden. And if the burden has already been taken, what's your burden doing heavy when God has already took it? My God, my burden should always be light. I'm yoked up to a God that has everything, know everything. He already paved the way. And he said the work was finished from the foundation of the earth. Amen. If I don't understand that, I'm going to get it in myself and start working out of myself. People don't want to wait now. They want to move quickly. The psalmist said, wait, I say on the Lord. And be of good courage. And again, I say, wait. We got to wait on him. And you got this old saying, God, no, God, wait. No, God ain't waiting on you. He wants you to be obedient when he speak to you. Because he's waiting on you, my God. It's, it's going to be a long time because we know how we are very lazy when we're doing stuff. You know, Lord, you know, I don't feel like getting up right now. You think he's going to wait on you and you don't want to get up? Amen. And you don't want to obey his voice? You talking about God waiting on you? God ain't waiting on you. God wants you to catch up and say, okay, Lord, what revelation are you going to put in my spirit? What are you going to reveal in my spirit so I can be obedient to that first? I got to first get this down so I can catch up with you, Lord. And once it starts working, God said, I can trust you now. You're going to do exactly what I'm going to tell you. The Bible says when God gave Abraham his promise, my God, Isaac became a young man. I don't know if he was around 17, 18, but he said, I want you to do something, Abraham. Take your only son and take him up to Mount Moriah and and my God sacrificed him. Abraham did not flinch because he already knew the voice of God. He took Isaac right to Mount Moriah. And when he got to Mount Moriah, Isaac said, Lord, we don't have daddy. We don't have no sacrifice. And Abraham said, the Lord will provide. When you don't have what you're supposed to have and you can't see what you can't see, God has already put something in your spirit to say the Lord has already provided. I have my answer on the inside. The Holy Ghost will reveal to me what I need to have, what I need to do I just need to trust what's on the inside of me because the Lord has already provided from the foundation of the earth God is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent had he not said shall he not do had he not spoken and shall he not make good for I have received commandments to bless and had blessed and I cannot reverse it that's why God say Joshua when you get out there I want you to know that I want you to take two of those five don't go out there with all of them again because too many folks will mess you up Amen. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. He said this book of the law should not depart out of thy mouth. You got to have this word in your mouth. The Bible says Abraham got up there. My God, he said the Lord's going to provide for me. Amen. Bound his son on and looked up and stretched that night back. And a voice spoke out of heaven. An audible voice said, Abraham, do the child no harm. I'm talking about God speaking to us now. And the angel spoke twice to Abraham. And now he looked over. He said, I have a ram over here in the thicket. And God then said, he had said, because you believe me, Abraham, now I have to do something because my son coming here. And because I can't swear about no great, I can't swear about another God. I'm the only wise God. He said, in blessing, I'm going to bless you. In multiplying, I'm going to multiply you. If you can get this in your spirit, when trouble comes, all you got to do is look back and say, God, you said Abraham, blessings were mine. Amen. And you have given me a double blessing through your son, Jesus Christ. And you said all that Abraham had, you we can have it. All that you gave Jesus, we are heirs with God. We are joint heirs with Christ Jesus. I want you to stand up, my God, and know that God is God in your life. And when trouble comes, you remind him that God, what you said, if sickness comes, you remind mind him and say Lord you are the healer you spoke to three million Jews and said I am the Lord that healed thee the Bible say there wasn't a feeble one among them there was nobody sick there was nobody my God walking and all that stuff and they were still cutting up but God put healing in their bodies amen he looked at Jeremiah and said, Jeremiah, is there no bomb in Gilead? Is not my daughter's being healed? I am a healer. When Jesus came to the earth, he began to heal the sick, my God, and raise the dead. He went to the nobleman's house, raised his son up. He went to Jehovah's house, raised his, da his daughter. He went places, and my God, he stopped the funeral procession and raised the boy up. Didn't call him by his name and say, sit up right now. Boy, sit up. My God gave him back to his mama. He was doing miracles because he said, I can only do what I see my father do when we see what God is doing on the inside he will begin to reveal to us and when we are obedient things will begin to happen miracles are not happening because we're not seeing what the father is doing and what the father is doing on the inside of us amen hallelujah hallelujah glory to God forever glory to God forever Somebody say, preach, pastor. You got to know, my God, that God is working on the inside of you. Amen. Greater is he that is in me than he that is within the world. I have the greater one on the inside, and he's working on the inside of me. Amen. Hallelujah. And God made a declaration to Abraham and said, I'm going to bless you and multiply you. Now we're working too hard now. When you know something about God. And I knew this from when the glory came in. When God told them certain garments to put on. Because while you're working for him, he don't want you sweating. Amen. <laughs> Woo -wee. That's why it's so important to know God's voice. Now we sweat every day. It's a sign of what God told you. You're going to sweat from, the, from your brow. It's a sign your body let you know this body has been dealt with and, and it was at, at a cursed state. But God took the curse to the tree. Amen. Set us free from it and we are no longer cursed. I want you to know and we don't have to work hard no longer. Because God has promised us he is the God of abundance. And spiritually he want to pour upon us and give us wisdom and give us insight. I want God to reveal something. Once he reveal it, I'm going to start speaking out of my mouth. Amen. Come on, say amen to that. Amen. Okay, minister, watch this. Read, watch what it says. And, and but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. So are we speak it? In a mystery. In an inward mystery. And it is hidden. It comes alive. And then we speak it. Watch this. Even the hidden wisdom. Even the hidden wisdom. Which God ordained. Before the world unto our glory. Did he ordain it before the world? Jesus was that hidden wisdom. He brought him to the earth. And now he is dictating to the Holy Spirit what he want in the church. If no Holy Spirit is operating, then the church is going to freeze over. Amen. You can be smarter and smart as Einstein. I'm telling you, if there's no Holy Spirit, I want you to know the church will freeze over. Amen. Because then we're going to start working off our natural mind, and our natural mind cannot compare to Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. Come on, say amen to that. Amen. Now, 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 let me make some sense out of this because in the same chapter right above that, go to that, go to that first chapter, that 26 verse, because you need to see what I'm telling you because we start working out the natural. We're not going to be able to do nothing. For you see your calling, brethren. Yes. How that not many wise men after the flesh. After the natural. After the flesh. Not many mighty. Yes, not many mighty. Not many mighty folks that are strong. Not many noble. Not many noble. People that said, people that are holding position. Watch this. Not are, many are, are watch, called. Are called. Watch what it says. But God has chosen the foolish things. But God took somebody that didn't have good sense. <laughs> that know he had to mold them and make them. He took somebody that my God that's going to listen to him. And he wasn't looking for nobody mighty already. That's why when Samuel went down to Jesse's boy's house, he said, I am looking at their heart. I don't care how big they are, how strong they are. I need somebody that's going to obey me. And he looked at, he looked at Jesse and said, is all these your boys? He said, no, I have one more left out there in the field. And he's keeping the sheep. And we know David was a man of war. He was a man that will fight anything. He said, a bear came and I took the sheep out of the bear's paw. He said, a lion came. I grabbed him by his mane and I snatched the, the, the sheep out of his paw. I want you to know I'm looking at this uncircumcised Philistine. You got to have a heart when you fighting against a devil and those big old mountains come. You got to have a heart to stand still and speak to the devil and let him know that my God no devil is going to come against the church. That's why he told my God Peter, Peter the, the declaration about Peter upon this rock I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Amen. Hallelujah. David knew something that is a who this boy I think he is. God looks at the heart. He don't look how big you are. He ain't looking at how smart you are. He ain't looking at he's looking at will you obey him when he speaks to you? Amen. Are you gonna be obedient when he speaks something in your spirit? Are you gonna follow him and not break break line or get out of order? You're gonna follow him because now when you see stuff not happening, you kind of get like, you know, sadly because Lord, I know you spoke to me. Amen. I know you told me that, Lord. And all kind of hell break loose after God speak to you. <laughs> to bring you out of what you're in. Amen. Y'all say amen. amen. All kind of hell will break loose when God speak to you. That's when you, know it's, that's when you know God is speaking to you. You ain't got hell in your life. I'm going to tell you right now, something ain't right. Amen. Because God's trying to mature you to a place where you can talk back to the enemy. Come on, say amen to that. Amen. Anyway, ain't got nobody that's telling you you're going to die. Not yet. I'm on assignment, devil. I'm on assignment. God gave me this assignment. I'm going to be obedient on this assignment until God says so. Then he'll take me home. But you're not going to put fear in my heart and tell me I'm going to die. I rebuke fear. Fear won't come up on this body. I rebuke doubt and unbelief. That's why God told over that Hebrew, my God, he is the head of the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Who you going to believe? Uh, as Isaiah said, whose report will you believe? You going to keep believing the natural man or you going to keep believing the spiritual man? The man that died for us, shed his blood for us, gave us all that we need in Holy Ghost. That we can walk by faith and not by sight. And watch what it says. Read it. Which none this. of the princes of this now, world now, knew. None of the prince, none of the devil his demons knew. For had they known it. For has they, if they had known it, they would not have crucified man, the Lord of glory. They would have left Jesus on that cross. They'd have left, they'd have left him. No, nah, we can't let him get to that cross. We're going to let him keep walking around. But because they're not omnipresent, they're not omnipresent. I'm saying that's when that that's discern of spirits coming, you know they don't know everything. Amen. If they'd have known that, they would have left him on planet Earth. The devil got in a hurry trying to kill him. And brought him right back to his potential, where he's supposed to be. Amen. He said, I'm getting out of this flesh, not devil. Ain't nothing you can do. You just made my day. <laughs> Ooh, can you see the devil making God's day? When he put him on that cross and he said it was finished. He said, I bet you, I, I can't just, just sometimes just put yourself in there. I bet you, Jesus, I got you now, partner. You just messed up. Amen. <laughs> I'm going back to my glorified body. 
and I'm coming back to the earth. And I'm going to talk to my disciples and get them in line and let them know I have all power in heaven and in earth. He walked that thing to the letter. He went down the Ville de la Rosa so you and I could be set free in our minds. Amen. He wished he hadn't crucified him. And watch what it says. Read it. But watch. as it is written. But as it is written. I have not seen. Everybody say, I have not seen. No ear heard. No nope, ear heard. Neither have entered into the heart of man. Yes. The things which God has prepared. So watch just the things that God has prepared. Now, there's a lot of things prepared for us. But watch what the next verse says. For them that love him. That for how many of y'all love God? Watch what the next verse says. But God had revealed it but unto us. God had revealed it unto us by, by his spirit. By his what? Spirit. Holy Spirit. So watch this. When God reveals stuff to you, you know he's letting you know, I'm getting ready to bless you. Amen. I am going to show you your future. But you got to walk toward it. Whatever you do, don't come in here comparing what God said to you. Just walk toward your future. Amen. The Lord told me this, and the Lord, and then it never get there because you're trying to show folks how much God can speak to you. Amen. But if you get at home and start meditating on what God said, and He told Joshua, "This book shall not depart out of thine mouth." And when you meditate on it, Joshua, it's going to bring good success. Amen. And I want you to know, Joshua, meditate on that thing. If you go back further, God told, uh, told Moses, won't you rehearse this in the ear of Joshua, that it may be a memorial. He began to rehearse that stuff in Joshua's ear. And God said, this is a simple principle. I want you to rehearse my word in your ear. Be careful what you let get in the ear gate and the eye gate. Let anybody Don't let anybody get in your ear because they can mess up your rotation. There's a rotation going. On, don't let them mess up the rotation that God has for you because they haven't seen what God is going to do with you. They haven't seen what God is going to bring you. It's already prepared. It's not my God. That's why some folks, you know, you see folks, my God, God let somebody build something and they lose it and you'll walk right into it. Amen. It's not covered to this. I'm telling you. Here, let, let me give you an example. This church right here. Amen. Let me give you a good example now. Now, when we was at the small church, they'd already got the blueprints, the plans. We we're going to build right down the street right there. Amen. Right down the street, they was getting ready to build. We had to did a whole revival on that property. God was moving. Had a guy come from Ohio preaching, my God. And my, my, he was preaching, preaching, preaching. Man, boy, he was having a good time. And God said, y'all, y'all beat it, but I don't, that's, that's what I, don't, I don't want y'all to have that. Amen. And right down the street here, they were selling this building. Yeah. I have not seen ear have not heard. Neither have it entered into the heart of many good things that God has prepared for them that love him. God said, I'm going to skip past. You try to do it good, but I'm going to do it. I don't need your help. Yeah, I know you got the blueprint. I know you got everything down, but I don't want that. I want you to have this. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you don't know the voice of God on the matter, you'll get mad. Now you're going with the plan. You're on cue. But God said, since you was obedient to me, I got to bless you even more. I have to multiply what you're doing. Amen. And the building was right on the corner waiting on us. Amen. Boy, we got this building. We did a good old parade. We did what they did. My God. Y'all don't know nothing about the parade. We got a parade from the old church all the way to here. We got police escort to bring us right in this place, and we shouted the victory. Hallelujah. But I'm trying to show you it was already prepared. We didn't have to lay one brick. We didn't have to do nothing. Somebody else did it for us. Amen. When God wants you to have something, somebody else will do it for you. And all you got to do is walk in it, and then God will give you the wisdom on what you need to do. Come on, say amen to that. Amen. He took our late pastor when they didn't want to give Pastor Jim any money. He took us and God said, I told you to go in there with him. And they told Brother Howard nine times, we ain't giving you nothing. Pastor Howard went in there and gave them a master plan. They kicked out the money, and they blessed this place, and we're here today because what God has spoken to somebody else, it was already prepared. Prepared. Hallelujah. What you are looking for, it is already prepared. Quit looking for stuff. And God said, if you be obedient, I will bring it right to you. Amen. He said, my God, I'll touch men's heart. I'll make sure they'll pour, my God, what I need to pour up on you. And they will do it because I have givers in the earth. Amen. Now, let, me, let, me, let me calm down. I'm trying to give you a picture on how God does things. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. Some stuff is already waiting for you. Amen. He might let you have a little success of, you know, you doing something so you can have some kind of gratification. <laughs> he did let us do a little something here. Amen. And to come clean it up, straighten it up, make it smell good, fix it up. My God. See, that's what I want y'all to do. Straighten it up. Amen. Make it immaculate. Make it look good. <laughs> stretch that pool pit. That was a little small pit. Stretch that pool pit out, man. Pastor Howard got to work in this place. I had this place looking. We had them pews here then. Had them pews all down everything. Boy, they had that thing shining in here. Had, had that wood floor all down the road. I'm like, boy, we, she came in and beautified this place. Amen. I want you to know when God give you something, I want you to keep it nasty. Amen. Nobody going to come to a nasty church. Amen. You're going to be scared to sit down. <laughs> so don't bring nobody into a dirty house. Amen. Don't try to do nothing before now. Get it fixed. I believe God till you get everything straight then. Bring everybody into something looking good. Amen. So this was already waiting on the corner. Everything was already waiting on them. Pastor Howard now. Amen. We were just following. Like, boy, this is something. I got that truck and drove it on over here. Boy, I got that BFI truck that rolled off and put everybody in that roll off. We come down that street just blowing that horn. I went on. We are like we were going, like we were leaving, like we were leaving, leaving Egypt. We were leaving Egypt, coming over here to victory, coming to the promised land. Amen. I got on that horn. I know how to blow a horn. I had that thing blowing too. Coming on down that street. My, 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 my. Had that score and everything coming down. Amen. When God get ready to bless you, he'll give you a, a whole escort. You might not know those people, but they'll bless you. They'll be on standby to bless you. Amen. Quit worrying about who's going to do it. Just believe God has already done it. It's already done. Listen to your spirit, man. So I'm trying to show you, you, you somebody already built what you're looking for. Amen. Can you believe that? Yeah. Ooh, let me stop here. Let me, let me see. Come on, man. Let's go out. Watch this read. For the Spirit searches all For things. Who search all things? The Spirit, the Spirit searches something. All things. The Spirit is searching out what we need. He's trying to let us know. Don't do that. Amen. Don't go here. Leave that alone. Leave her alone. <laughs> Leave him alone. Don't touch that. Stay Amen. right here. Don't move. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to you. Get yourself acquainted with what's happening on the inside of you. Amen. Amen. Yea, the deep things and of God. Say, yea, the deep things of God. Read. For what man knoweth the things so of a man? What man knoweth the things of a man? Say, the spirit of man which is in Except him. Except the spirit of man that is within him. So we don't know nothing about nobody unless gospel is going on. Amen. And it's not good. I, you know, you don't hear about it, but people gospel. I don't care how good I can preach. Amen. I don't care how good some other preacher can preach. It's going to be gospel around you. Amen. So you got you to gotta weed that stuff out and say, I'm tired of gossip. Amen. Now, be, d d the truth, how many of y'all tired of gossip? <laughs> how many of y'all tired of hearing about folks stuff that you can't do nothing about? Amen. You can't do nothing about it. So cut it off. Amen. And when you see them, shake the hand and keep moving. You can't do nothing about what happened to them. Amen. Don't forget, sin is sin. You done one, according to the Amplified and James. You done one, you done them. Oh. So get your mind off sin. Keep your mind on it's been condemned. And don't let people keep telling you stuff in your ear. Amen. And all they're doing is running you away and they stand. Because, first of all, they see something in you. They know you got some talent, and they don't want to compete against you. It's not, it's not about being competitive, but they see that to run you off. Amen. <laughs> they try to run you off because they know God is going to use you. Amen. So they'll try to get right up under your wings and tell you something that you can go about your business. And now you're stuck like Chuck because you're listening to gossip. Amen. Now, now, they did it to Jesus, so don't worry. They, they, Jesus was preaching a, a, a profound message. He was talking about the rich and all that, and you know it's hard for a rich man to enter in, and then all them, all them disciples said, well, who, who can go to heaven? And at that moment, all of them turned away. Amen. 
and he turned around his own. He said, well, y'all leave me. And Peter said, we don't have nowhere to go. When you don't have nowhere to go, stay put. Amen. Don't move on nobody's voice. Listen to your inner man. So if you got enough nerves, if they, they had enough nerves to call Jesus the devil, <laughs> what about you? Amen. They called him to his face. You're a devil. You're serving Beelzebub. You're doing that by the power of the devil. That's when he tells them, all men of the sin are forgiven, but that which is blaspheming of the Holy Spirit. You don't deal with the Spirit of God. It is working on our behalf. Amen. You don't grieve him. Don't make him. You just, just if you're doing something, you say, God, I repent. Get, don't act like you don't know what you're doing. Amen. Don't act like you don't know you did it. <laughs> Mingling up in the crowd like you know you ain't. I ain't going to know nothing. Holy Spirit already know. God already know. Why are you worrying about men? Amen. Who can't do nothing for you. What God wants to do is be honest with ourselves. And the more honest we are, the better he can deal with us. Amen. <laughs> Y'all say preach, Pastor. Yeah. I'm a, I'm, I'm, I was trying to get over there to uh, Romans 8 so I can show you where Christ dwells on the inside of us. He dwells on the inside of us, and he wants us to make sure that we know he dwells on the inside of us. Amen. So by process, we have to start praying and studying the word of God and taking your time. Don't get in a hurry. Don't let this fool you up here. This stuff here, this right here. It's not like right here. Amen. Let me say it again. This right here is not like right here. Just because you have a suit on don't make you can don't think you can be right here. Because it's not like right here. You can look good out there, but right here you better make sure you know what you're doing. Amen. <laughs> Y'all say amen. Amen. This is something that every fivefold minister has to be held accountable. And God's gonna hold us accountable. That's why he always say, don't let a layman rebuke an elder, because he's going to deal with us. Amen. That's why he said, don't bring an accusation against an elder, because he's going to deal with us, unless you have two or three witnesses to do it. And Samuel came to town. They were so scared of Samuel. <laughs> and people were so scared of Samuel. It was a crying shame. Like, are you coming for peace, or are you coming to fight? He said, I'm coming for peace today. Amen. Look, when you read Job, Job was so wealthy at one time, the people were stopping their tracks just to bow to him. Amen. They would stop. Read him up on him. He had so much, everybody would stop and put their hand over their mouth. There go Job. Amen. Nobody putting their hand over their mouth for you today. <laughs> Who that is? And the minute they say preaching, oh, I don't know rotten thing. Them, all them things rotten. They call all of us rotten. Amen. Well, if the preachers that's supposed to preach are rotten, then what that make you? And if God put all in the church, how can you hear unless you have a preacher? How can you hear without a preacher? And how can you preach unless you've been sent? So how are you going to say something about a preacher? And if he's rotten, then what you are? Amen. If I'm a devil, you must be a demon. Because you know how they say, you know how they say, birds of a feather. If you know I'm a devil, you got to be a demon. <laughs> Watch this. The Bible said, Moses, my God, God buried Moses over there in Mount Moab. Uh, uh, in, uh, Mount Moab. He took him over there and buried him, and nobody knew what his supper was. And then one day in the scripture, Jude, Jude prophesied and said, the archangel Michael had Moses' body, taking him to heaven. And Satan got a hold of him. And this is all the archangel Michael said, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. And the Bible said he didn't bring a real accusation against him because he knew he had he was an angel at one time. You cannot be, keep bringing real railing accusation against God's people when you made of human flesh yourself. Amen. Because what you're talking about them might happen to you. And then you're gonna get on the phone. I need everybody to pray. I need everybody to pray for me now. <laughs> so you gotta watch what you say. Amen. You're saying what you're saying. Because the inward man will tell you, don't say that. Let me reveal to you what's happening. Amen. I am telling you by the Spirit of God. When you go places, God will reveal what's in front of you. And all you can do is pray for them. 
You can't get up and down. You, you, you. You can't do that because God ain't tell you to do that. Amen. Y'all you can do is pray. And keep your spirit man strong. Hallelujah. Can I go to a couple more scriptures? God, we've got about 10 minutes left. I want to close out right here. Go ahead, Elder. Watch what it says. Even so, the things of God know it no man. Know it no man. But the Spirit but of God. But the Spirit of God. We're going to stop at the 13th verse. I wanted to get this 13th verse. Now in. we have received not the Spirit of the world. Now we have not received the Spirit of the world. But the Spirit which is of God. But the Spirit which, listen, is real good. The Spirit which is of God. That we might know. That we might know. The things that are freely. The things that are freely. Given to us of God. Given to us of God. Which things also we speak. Now watch this 13 verse. Which things we also, everybody say we speak. Read. Not in the words of man's We're wisdom. We're not going to speak teaching. man's wisdom, what, uh, what they're teaching. He said, watch this. But which the Holy Ghost teaches. Now, get this scripture in your spirit. The, who teaching? The Holy Ghost teaches. The Holy Ghost is bringing the process of the mind of God. Watch what it says. Comparing spiritual and things. And the Holy Spirit is going to compare spiritual things. With spiritual. With spiritual things. He's not going to compare fleshly things with spirit. It's going to be spiritual things with spiritual things. In other words, the Holy Spirit is now revealing the mind of God in your spirit to follow. Amen. He's not going to bring you junk in your spirit. Because <laughs> when he do bring stuff that you need to know, he wants you to go in intercession with it immediately because you can break the cycle of that person and save them from going to a place called hell. Amen. My house should be called a house of prayer. And we ain't a bear meeting. We ain't a prayer meeting. We ain't got time to be going back and forth fighting with bears. Amen. Y'all say amen to that. How you get around. Every time you get a meeting, my God, everybody fighting each other. Amen. It's prayer meeting with peace on it. So God can talk to us. Y'all stand to your feet and lift your hands. Amen. I'm going to pick that verse back up because the Holy Spirit is teaching the mind of God to us. And that's why he told over there, John, but the anointing that you have in you, teaching. you know, abides in you. You need no man to teach you. So I want you to know when we come to church, to be edified and stirred up, but the Holy Spirit will teach you in your daily life. Amen. And walk you toward God. How many of us want to walk toward God? Amen. And remember, God don't need our help. He wants us to be obedient. Y'all remember Saul try to help, help, help God? He got himself in trouble. Amen. David tried to help God. He got himself in trouble. God didn't want David to count nobody. You want him just to be king. Do your job for God, and God wants you just to be yourself. Amen. He don't want you to be all over the place. He wants you to be standing firm, in line. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Knowing who you are, regardless of what somebody say about you, regardless of how they bring their past, your past up on you, you got to stand in line and be firm and solid in your confession and in your mind. Knowing who you are, and knowing that God is with you, whatever you're doing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a great God we serve today. <laughs> hallelujah. I want things to happen on the inside of us. I want folks to be excited about the God that's on the inside of them. I want you to know that God is with you. I don't want you to doubt it. I want you to know that God is with you. When you know God is with you, you think I'll be coming, out, just to me, you think I'll be coming out here if I didn't know God was with me? I, I'm not going nowhere if I don't think God is with me. Amen. So because he put me on a sign, this is how you got to look at this. And each time he tell me something, he makes sure he tell me to preach. So that's why you see me preaching all the time. He said, I want you, when COVID came, he said, I want you to preach and not look back. Amen. And he said, whatever happened, let it happen. You keep preaching. Don't you flinch on what happens while you're doing what you're doing. So I'm not afraid to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm not afraid to do a funeral and come back and do a weird and then come preach y'all and preach y'all the truth. Amen. I'm not about to put my head down and say, oh, Lord, everybody, everybody, everybody ain't dying. Amen. God still have his hands on people. So you got to preach truth to them. You got to make sure they're edified. You got to make sure you can stir them up to go after God. That's why I preach the way I preach. That's why I'm always stirred up. I told y'all my motto. I'm always ready. 
I might not look like I'm crazy when I'm sitting up there, but I'm always ready. Amen. To do what God told me to do. And you got to get in your spirit and listen to God's voice. I'm going to cross-reference next time we get up and we're going to cross-reference over there in Romans 8. We're going to see that the thing that's in you is going to be revealed on the inside of you. Amen. And that's why the Holy Spirit is praying on the inside of us. And then we'll jump over to something else and show you how God is talking to people. And how he's making himself known. How he used Jesus as he walked through the crowd. He perceived the men's heart. He knew they wasn't with them. He knew what they was thinking. That's why he was asking questions because he knew. I wish I could know everything everybody was thinking. It probably would eat me up. No, they ain't thinking that about me, Lord. So he don't let us do what Jesus did. Amen. You know everybody's heart. You'll be like, okay, you're talking about me. Now you go try and hit somebody in the mouth. That's why he can't tell you everything. He perceived their wickedness, he said. Amen. He knew they was wicked on the inside. But he still walked among them in love. He didn't do nothing else but walk in love. But he knew everything. His perception was king. The Holy Spirit is king. It'll reveal to you. to let you know how to get around stuff. Navigate things. Trust God for what you're doing. Y'all lift your hands and thank God for the word of God. Amen. And thank God for what's in you. And, and, and get acquainted. Make communion with the Holy Spirit. And talk to him in the morning. Say, Holy Spirit, we need you. I need you to minister to me. I need to hear a word. He might tell you to get in the word, but he's going to speak to you somewhere down the line. He's going to lead and guide you into all truth. He's going to point you back to scriptures, let you know. And let you know that I'm with you. God is with us, saints. Stay ready for God to speak to you. Amen. Be obedient to your call. Whatever office or whatever you're holding, be obedient to it. And then pray until God tell you something how to do it and wait on him amen amen and when you be obedient blessings comes when you seek the kingdom spiritual things come those things are coming in your spirit father i thank you now if you want to give a word you can i'm open to hear your voice it's your house your people your ways I decrease that you can speak to your people. Not we're going to shout the victory and go home and rest in your precepts. Because you already got our heavy burdens already taken. And our yoke is now light because you've yoked up with you, Father. We thank you for letting us yoke up with you to walk under your guide, your tender loving kindness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amande Osei. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God forever. Glory to God. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord, God Almighty. Oh, praise our God. Oh, praise our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. just I, I have a word of knowledge and I, two of them just came down I just want to give them and and um, we're not keep you here all night I want um, you to trust God and what he's doing amen amen so to the young man right here standing out with your hand across come for a second right here yeah you come 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 let me tell you what the Lord said to me he died and Dad, you can come stand behind if you want to. I'm going to give this, this word to him because he has great things that God is going to do for you. Uh, he said, it's not your outer appearance that he's looking at. He's looking at your heart. 
And so he said this to me. He said, tell him, I'm going to explode or I'm going to flourish as you get into your field of what you're getting ready to do. God said, I'm going to bless you. And you're going to see as you get on these jobs and you're going to see that it's going to frustrate you, but you're going to have to work them because he's pushing you to something greater that he wants you to do. And when you get there, I say when you get there, you're going to see God has a hand on you all the time. And son, I'm telling you, I just had a glimpse of him blessing you abundantly. If you stay the course, you hold your, keep yourself in God's hand. And watch this. You have to dig in there then. Okay, let me share some of these people that want to be around me. I need to do what God told me to do. This is a word of wisdom going into your future. And you will see as you keep the course and know what's in your mind and know what you want to do and know that God is with you, you're going to see. God bless you. You had not seen. You had not seen what the Lord is going to do with you. I am telling you by the Spirit of God. You watch God do a work for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all say amen to that. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God forever. Glory to God forever. Brace me on the ocean. Parista mama mandolobosi. Hear what the word of the Lord is saying. He said this to me, he said to tell you that I saw your plight and I saw your battle. He saw what you were in. He said this, I heard him say this just as clear. He said, tell her, I know they did her dirt. Look at me, look at me. He said, I know they did you that. They pushed you away because they thought you didn't have nothing in you. But the Lord said, you're my daughter. I'm going to uphold you in the hollow of my hand. And what they have done will not pluck you out of my hand. I will restore what they have done. And I will begin to bless you all over again. And you will see, said the Spirit of God. They will not use my daughter, I say. And I not take care of my daughter. I will give it all back. Set the Spirit. Oh, the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know why the Holy Spirit used dirt, but I do have a revelation. Amen. Because people that are dirty will always try to dirty you up. They don't want you to move in God. They don't want you to do nothing God told you to do. Amen. You have to obey God. Don't let folk move you out of your position. Don't let folk say you don't have nothing when you have something on the inside. Father, I rebuke the spirit of witchcraft. Come against it now. I tear it down right now. I declare that your children is walking under power. There is no divination, no sorcery, nothing that'll come against the house of God whom the Son set free is free indeed walk in your freedom now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty walk in your liberty God has not given you the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind hold your head up and walk toward the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and expect him to give you what you ask for. Expect him to do what he said he was going to do about you. Believe him every day and say, God, you're going to bring this to me. Hallelujah. For you are a good God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God forever. Thank Glory you. to God forever. Hallelujah. He's good and he's good all the time. Amen. Hallelujah. As we get ready to leave this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God for his grace and his mercy. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, my. Glory to God. 
There's blessings coming out of heaven for God's children. Amen. All I want us to do is listen to the Spirit of God. <laughs> God will teach you. When you're in your car, he'll give you a word. But he wants you to make that word come alive. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for the time of giving. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Father, for those that are going to bring you an offering. And we thank you that you're the God that's much more than enough. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Woo. Amen. Y'all have any announcements? Yes. Doctors Guevara and Shannon Johnson are inviting our family and friends to join us on Saturday, May 4th at 4 p.m. right here at Interdenominational Faith Assembly for our ordination ceremony. God is blessing the body, and the men and women of God are embracing their callings, and we want you to join in the celebration of the ordination of our clergy that Saturday, May 4th, 2024, at 4 p.m. here at Interdenominational Faith Assembly. Come bless the Lord with us. Body of Christ, Pastor Guevara is inviting you to come out and join him Sunday, May 5th, 2024, at 4 p.m., as he brings forth the uncompromised word of God as guest speaker at Disciples Outreach Ministries at 2023 Gore Road, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, as they honor their pastor, Bishop Thelma Pearl, for 24 years of service. Let us come out and let's follow pastor and the glory as miracles, signs, and wonders are sure to fall. Mark your calendars and make plans to participate in our annual 2024 Year Church Anniversary Celebration, Saturday, May 25th, and Sunday, May 26th. And if you are a member of IFA, be reminded you may send your annual pledge of $100 to the finance office, or you can drop it off in the mailbox outside of the church office. And please use the blue giving envelopes and indicate that the offering is for church anniversary. Our shepherds, Dr. Guevara and Dr. Shannon Johnson, are inviting the IFA body, along with family and friends, to a seminar on managing, dealing with, and overcoming grief with our friend and special guest, Dr. Nicholas Eno. That's Friday, April 19th at 6 p.m. and Saturday, April 20th at 10 a.m., right here at Interdenominational Faith Assembly. You should definitely make plans to attend this free seminar. It's managing, dealing with, and overcoming grief with Dr. Nicholas Enos. Looking forward to seeing you and your family there. Amen. This concludes the announcements. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Thank you. And to the guy right there in the burgundy shirt, could you come out in that aisle right there? You just turned your head. Yeah, come out to that aisle. Yes, 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 sir. Let me, let me, let me.
give you what the Lord just said. This is what he said. He said, he said, I am relieving you of your debt. And um, I saw you riding high. You're now in. He said to let him know that I'm with them. Whatever calamity or whatever there is about to take place, he said, I'm going to put you above it. And I'm going to let you ride above that. That nothing will touch you. But I'm going to relieve you of what's happening. And I, I saw this coming out. I was trying to make sense of it. And you were riding on something, but it's coming to earth. It's just for you. And when it hit, you're going to know that God blessed me with it. It's going to catapult you into what you're supposed to be doing. But God told you some time ago, it's going to catapult you there. It's going to take you there. Because God said, I'm riding on this thing with him to get him where he's supposed to be. Set the spirit of the living God. Amen. I was praying back there. I said, God, if he's a real man of God, let him have a word for me. Come on, y'all. <laughs> let me tell you, he pulled on God. He pulled on God for an answer. So confirmation is everything. It just happened as we were talking. Notice, I didn't close out because I was listening to what God was saying. And you know what? I'm going to tell y'all something. It's going to get a day where we're not going to be walking out here like no one hour from I'm telling you. Amen. You might, well, might have, you might have to bring your lunch here and go out in the foyer and eat in the foyer and come back in here. Because the day coming. The day is coming. The day is coming. Amen. I'm sure that the day is coming. You better bring your Vienna sauce and your crackers and when you get hungry, go out there and eat, my Lord, and come back in here and say, God, I still want some more. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet. Let's get ready to go home. Hallelujah. Yeah, my mama say. Ay, ay, ay. All right, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want. He making me to lie down in green pastures. He making me to lie down in green pastures. He leading me beside the still waters. He leading me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He restored my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness. He leads me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. For his name's sake. Yea. Yay. Do I walk through the valley of the shadow of the death? Do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil. I will fear no for evil. For thou art with me. For thou art with me. Thy rod. Thy rod. And thy staff. And thy staff. They comfort me. They comfort me. Thou prepares the table before me. Thou prepares the table before me. In the presence of my enemies. In the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup. Cup, runneth over. Run it over. Surely, surely, goodness and mercy, goodness and mercy, shall follow me, shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life, of my life. And I will, and I will, and I will, and I will dwell, dwell in the house of the Lord, in the house of the forever. Lord, forever. God bless you.